Hey, this is Shobit from Intentional Product Manager. Now, today we'll be talking about 11 things I wish I knew early on in my product management career that I know very well now. Stay tuned for more. Let's go back, reflect. I'm gonna share some stories, some insights that I've gotten through my product management career. And I think just as importantly, by coaching, I don't know, 700 people at this point, at different points in their careers, trying to summarize everything in this video. So take notes, lots of hopefully very useful things coming for you. Number one, great ideas come from everywhere. Early on in my product management career, I went to go claim ideas that, hey, this was my, this has my stamp on it. But frankly speaking, some of the best ideas I've ever had came from either engineers, designers, or customers directly. Given the technology, given user experience, they could tell me what would be a good way to solve problems or like what problems were in the first place. As I matured, I realized my goal wasn't to say, oh, I came up with this idea. That's meaningless. Most of the times, the challenge is not in coming up with ideas. It's in getting things done. I don't know if you're an experienced product manager, but if you are, you probably have had items on your roadmap for months and quarters and years. And you're like, I want to get them done. But you've never been able to get to them, drive alignment behind them, you know, galvanize your company behind a certain mission, a certain roadmap. And so the critical thing is not coming up with ideas. Great ideas can come from anywhere. The critical thing is for you to drive business results as a product manager. That is what you should be known for. That's what you you should do. Later on, I, I got to be trusted as, oh, if we have a ambiguous problem, one that's hard to solve, one that requires a lot of help from others, requires a lot of cooperation, so on and so forth. Well, put Shobit in charge of that. He will get it done. And that's what you should strive to be. That person who takes on ambiguous challenges and solves them, not one who sits and claims ideas. Lesson number two is a pretty big one. Manage your career like a product. What does this mean? Well, ultimately you're learning all these skills in product management on how to think strategically, how to build a vision, how to break problems down into different steps. But what I find is most product managers don't apply those same skill sets to their own career. I think part of that is not being aware. You're too close to the problem, so you need someone like me, like a coach, who helps you think through that. But really, a big part of that is ego. Ego, because in order for you to objectively look at where your career is now, you have to recognize that you made mistakes. You could have been further along. Some things are not where you want to be. And that ego gets people. They're like, they resist doing that. They resist doing an honest reflection. So you have to manage your career like a product and you have to give it the same objective view that you might do for your own uh, product, either by yourself or with somebody's help. Lesson number three, soft skills often carry the hard tasks. Great product managers are actually great people leaders. That's what they are. Most of the time, I see people obsessed with like technical certifications, just like certifications, learn the best technique for strategy, the ideal framework. All these things have their place. I'm not saying they're unimportant, but the real differentiator between excellent, amazing, highly achieved, visible, sought after product leaders is people leadership. It's the soft skills that really at the end of the day matter. Doesn't mean they have to be soft. These might be very influential, very in your face people, different personalities. That's all okay. But they've been able to rally people around certain themes and get everyone to work together. And that's really what makes a, a massive difference. Number four, no can often be the best solution. Sometimes you might be negotiating with stakeholders and others, and for you to tell them very honestly, sorry, this is just, we're never gonna do this. This is exactly why, might be the best solution. You know, sometimes I've seen people like always in this endless debate of, oh, maybe next quarter we'll get to it. Maybe next quarter we'll get to it. Just 
this does not align with the company's mission this does not align with the with the product vision this does not align with what our customers want we're not doing it as long as you justify what i've seen is most people are very reasonable they want certain things for themselves but they're very reasonable and they're willing to listen as long as you put the thought into thinking about it from their perspective and then just uh, giving them a straight answer and exactly why you you think a certain way lesson number 5 you have to negotiate your job you do not do it as given now i'm not talking about salary negotiations although you know that is its own thing that's a very important aspect i'm talking about a lot of people assume that they have to do certain things that you as a product manager you know somebody's putting things on your plate and you're like cool i have to do this i have to do that sure but i have no time for strategic work Well, did you really negotiate with your manager, with your stakeholders, what it is that you should be doing, and what it is that you don't need to do that others can do that maybe nobody needs to do? That redesigning your job, the renegotiation process of the job, that is fundamentally important. I would say that if you're doing the job as given, you're probably failing at it. You're being highly unintentional about it, right? You're like. Okay, these are all the requirements. Let me fulfill them. I mean, think of it in terms of like if you, the job was your customer's problem to be solved. You never fulfill a customer's feature request, right? Like what they say, "Hey, this is what I need to be done. This is what I want you to build." No, you try to understand what's the underlying problem, and maybe I can even come up with a better solution. Apply the same things to your job. You know, this is part of like managing your career like a product. It's like, "Cool, you come up with a better solution. You come up with a better solution for how to do your job." negotiated with other people and that's how you really do well in your job you find more time for that strategic work you get to know get known as that leader as the visionary person number 6 run your job don't let your job run you very similar to the last point the amount of burnout i see in product management is absolutely bananas crazy where like i've had people who've like gone multiple leaves of absences from various companies and they've come back after 3 months after like a lot of recovery like where they've literally been in a state that they went on that leave of absence and for the first 2 to 3 weeks they could hardly get out of bed they were so exhausted they needed that rest so much that their body just like shut down ever heard of mama bear you know you seen like women or men to protect their kids to save them they've like lifted cars they've done superhuman things the adrenaline has kicked in but once that adrenaline goes they are exhausted they like need massive rest like their body needs to recover lower that stress it's not that danger threat yet but it's getting close and so that low grade stress is on people and it's burning them out what's happening is that the job is running the people rather than the people running the job and then as a result like i see all these massive burnout happening where they like like i've heard horror stories it's like show with i just i just can't function like people have to go get therapy get counseling like all sort of things to recover so important thing is do not let your job run you run your job and this is something you should go do every quarter in the sense of every quarter revisit and figure out is it running me and what do i need to change to make sure i can get some semblance of balance control enjoyment fun in my life and in my in my job number 7 the user is not always right but they should always be heard this is when um, you're talking with users take the time to listen to them understand their core problems doesn't mean what they ask for needs to be in the roadmap and also because look for a whole bunch of reasons it might not be the solution that's appropriate this might be a big problem for them but not for the majority of market it doesn't align with your vision it doesn't align with your strategy you might want to do it later somebody else is already doing it better so it seems like a waste like a whole bunch of reasons why the solution that they prescribe the feature that they want to get done should not be done that's okay but you make them feel heard you listen to them and you capture themes and then you decide what to do but always listen to your users number 8 just because a problem can be solved does not mean you have to solve it this is prioritization in its ultimate form both on your 
roadmap, your backlog and everything, but also in just in your in your own life, in just your own prioritization. You could go help engineers, you could do like a whole bunch of things, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. And in particular, doesn't mean you should invest the energy, the mental energy needed to, to get that done. I've learned it the hard way for sure. I've always wanted to do more. I've always had my, you know, what, what do they call it? Like your eyes were bigger than your stomach where like you ate too much because it was like, I, I want this, I want this, I want this, everything can be eaten. And so you decided to eat everything. You don't need to solve every problem. And you know, like one of the related ideas is your environment, often there might be many things that are not ideal in it. Doesn't mean you have to fix everything to, to really do well there. I'll come back to this uh, in another point. Number nine, focus on landing, not launching. When I speak to most product managers, they're just proud of like, oh, we like delivered this new feature, had this major launch. Well, what happened after that? That's one of the things that we really um, started to focus on in a big way at Google, which is cool. Look, you can have all these launches and like Google's in some sense known for like a bunch of new products. They've also been known to like shut down quite a few, but like the main thing being your end result is not to get the product shipped. Your end result is, or two end results, solve the user's problem, solve for their use case, make their lives better, and get business results. You know, if it increases retention, if it increases revenue, like that's the ultimate end goal. So solve for both, which means that when you launch, there might be many things wrong and you might need to iterate many, many times to get to the end business results. So focus on that rather than just a launch and then I'm, I'm done. Number 10, very important. There is no such thing as a perfect place for product managers. You have to adapt to your environment. You have to understand what good product managers look like, what good product management looks like in the context of that environment. And then you go do that. I, I call this Marty Kagan problem. Why? Why is it the Marty Kagan problem? Because the guy's absolutely brilliant. He's run, he's written brilliant books showcasing this is how product management worked at this company, that company, this person did X. And then you find a whole bunch of product managers who are like, oh, my company doesn't do that. So it sucks. So I'm going to leave and I'm going to go find another place. And then they move to another place. And then they move to another place. While I've seen other product managers come in, take extreme responsibility, understand what good product management looks like at that company and do incredibly well. Make tons of money, get the visibility, the recognition they deserve, launch amaz amazing products, build great relationships. You know, that's ultimately what you want at the end of the day. There is always positives and negatives at any environment. Like you join a startup, highly unstructured. People don't really get what product management is. I'm generalizing, of course, but like that, that might be the case. But then you have the chance of shaping a product and maybe an entire market from the get-go. I remember launching a product that was like amongst the first of its kind. And then after that, we I think we had seven competitors launch behind us following our trail. And you know, that was cool, like early to shape this whole market, which has now become a major thing. So. It, that was a very uh, important thing. Don't expect your place to be perfect. Adapt to it. Do really well in it. Very carefully make the decision if you need to move on. That's not always the answer. Google, for example, one of people's dreams companies, you know, really good place. Like some of the best things is your colleagues are amazing. Most systems are well established. You can really afford to build a long-term strategy and play for the long-term and like have multi-year releases and like, do like stuff that impacts millions, sometimes maybe a billion users, like something like that. So absolutely amazing. But there's downsides. There is all sorts of hierarchies to deal with. There's a little bit of um, slowness because Google has to be careful and really make sure the core business is not at risk, make sure users' data is protected, like very mindful, as you might imagine, about those things. And so that might introduce some amount of slowness at times, but that's the price you pay and you adapt to that. So great product managers adapt to the environment. They don't, they don't, they spend very limited time on worrying about, oh, this is not perfect. That will never be. They don't worry about that other people 
are having this perfect environment because li literally no one is like if if it if they're saying it is they're lying uh do the best in your environment very strategically decide when it's time to move on based on what you want not based on what you don't have and that's the way you you do that number 11 is related to that shape your career narrative otherwise somebody else will shape it what does that mean well look look you know there's a there's a story of your career like you know why you went through certain places what you overall represent what are the values that you stand for at the end of the day what are you known to be really good at most people are sort of like looking at it very incrementally they're like oh you know i've done this shop oh i found this one which pays 30k more it's slightly better uh you know it uses a lot of skills so let me just go there rather than taking a step back and looking at what i want to be known as five years from now based on and then what is important to me over the next um for my next shop and then based on that intentionally what it is that i should be choosing and then based on that what is the story i should be telling about my career so far you don't need to tell everything you've done that's going to be a mistake it's like you're telling a story i mean imagine you know a movie a, a movie in a movie you you might have a few characters who's like 20 years have passed in their life and this movie like spans all that time now you're not picking up every single detail that'll be the worst movie ever what you're doing is like it's telling a story about this time that has passed same thing as your career narrative and the the cool thing is you just don't have to tell the story you can shape what happens and you can shape the actual things that are happening that go into the story so shape your career narrative otherwise others will shape it and like big part of what we do in intentional job search is help you build out your narrative looking forward what is going to happen and work on your narrative right now like what has already happened that you can use to market yourself sell yourself so those are the 11 things that i now know that i wish you knew and look at the end of the day this is where intentionality really matters it really matters that you have a team behind you to help you get to that next level like think through strategically about your career and help you get there if you need our help for that uh, book a, a, a call the link would be with this video and look forward to speaking with you very soon this is shobhit from intentional product manager talk to you soon